So today we'll talk about how the LNG is loaded on board ships. In general though, just to give you an idea about the chronological steps from arriving to the terminal until sailing to the discharge port. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Mustafa and I'm a ship's captain. So let's go step by step for the LNG ship loading process. Pre-arrival test. We do a couple of checks and tests before we arrive to the load port in order to confirm the readiness of the vessel. For instance, checking the viper line, liquid line and even the ballast line that are correctly set. Check the valve's opening and closure timings as per the manufacturer recommendations, ESD test, we'll talk about it later, and high level alarms and actions. These checks and preparations are included in a checklist called Shipshore Safety Checklist. All the information and details regarding safety, loading operation, discharge operation are included in this checklist and this is communicated before arriving to the load port or discharge port between the LNG ship and the terminal. Cooling down operation. In most cases, after discharge operation, the LNG ship leaves small quantity in her cargo tanks called coolant or heal quantity. The vessel is not declared ready to load until her cargo tank's temperature reaches minus 130 degrees Celsius for the membrane type and minus 110 degrees Celsius for the equator temperature for the most type. Preparation alongside. Once the vessel arrives, the load port is berthed alongside GT equipped with loading arms, one vapor line, and three or four liquid arms. The position of the vessel is adjusted by centimeters in order to align the vapor arm from the shore side with the vapor line from the ship side. Preloading meeting. After mooring operation, a meeting is held between the ship's crew and the terminal staff to discuss safety and operational procedures and to complete the ship shore safety checklist with all items remaining. Connection of cables and arms. In the meantime, different cables are connected such as bonding cable for the static electricity ESD cable for the emergency shutdown link and the communication cables. Later on, the loading arms are connected to ship's manifold and purged with nitrogen to confirm no oxygen is remaining inside the loading arms, and then leak test is conducted to ensure that no leak will occur during full rate. Warm ESD. The emergency shutdown system is a link between the vessel and terminal to shut down all the cargo pumps, compressors, close the manifold valves if any emergency happens during the operation. So before starting operation or cargo transfer, the system is tested from both sides, the vessel and the terminal. Once all checks are completed, the water curtain is started in order to protect the ship's hull should any major leak happens during the transfer. Initial or opening CMS. CMS stands for Custody, Transfer and Measurement System. To keep it simple, imagine our cargo tanks or our vessel like a bottle of water. At opening CMS, the system calculates the initial quantity before loading. At closing CMS, the system calculates the quantity after loading. The difference between these quantities is the quantity loaded. Simple, isn't it? Cargo lines cool down. Now the cargo transfer can begin, but first we need to cool down the shore arms to minus 130 degrees Celsius or required temperature by the terminal and minus 100 degrees Celsius for the ship's lines to prepare them for loading. Cold ESD. Some terminals require the cold ESD in order to test their valves and closure time after the cool down at the cold state. Commence loading operation. Once all these tests and preparations are completed, the loading can begin with slow rate at around 1000 cubic meter per hour. The slow rate is to confirm that the lines, connections are all tight, no leaks, and to control the boil of gas generation. Before increasing the rate, the hydraulic compressor can be started in order to control the sudden evaporation. Loading at full rate. If the boil of generation is under control, you can consider increasing the transfer until full rate. So full rate is either the maximum rate can be supplied by the terminal or the maximum rate can be supported by the vessel. It ranges between 8,000 to 12,000 cubic meter per hour and it takes approximately 60 minutes to ramp up from slow rate until full rate. Ballasting operation. The vessel has stability criteria to follow. To keep it simple, if you are loading LNG or cargo, you need to discharge the water and vice versa. If you are discharging the cargo or LNG, you need to uptake the water. This is to keep the vessel safely afloat. Adjusting the stagger. After full rate, you need to adjust the opening of each filling valve for each tank in order to complete all the cargo tanks simultaneously. Let's say tank 1 first, then tank 2, tank 3, and the completion with tank 4. Rate down and completion. One hour before you commence decreasing the rate, you inform the terminal, and one hour before completion, you start reducing the rate in order to complete your loading operation safely with slow rate. Draining, purging, and disconnection of shore arms. After completion, the terminal staff commence draining the lines from any remaining liquid and then purging with nitrogen to allow safe disconnection. Closing CTMS. Same as initial CTS, you do the final CTS. When you stop the system, it calculates the loaded quantity. Post-loading meeting. During this meeting, a representative from the terminal, from the customer, and the ship's captain will sign the loading document in order to clear the ship for sailing. 
In the future, each step will be explained by a separate video in order to allow you to know everything about the process. If you are not yet subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so and like the video, apparently it helps the algorithm. You may check out this video here where I explain the four steps to follow in order to prepare your energy ship for loading after shipyard or dry docking. Thanks for watching and see you next week.